you would, uh, turn your Bible to the book of Luke. We're going to try to read a little bit out of chapter 12 and verse 13. That's where we'll start. Luke 12, 13. The uh, title of this in my Bible is The Parable of the Rich Fool. And uh, I wanted to to uh, I studied this some, and, and uh, it uh, it showed me that uh, that I need it very much. So, and uh, with the things of this world, how they how they are out there to hinder, and how that they will will catch on to you like a magnet does to steel. Amen. And that you just don't <clears throat> realize how how close a walk we need to walk with the Lord. But we want to read some of this to you and hopefully it will encourage you and uh, strengthen you and uh, let you know that uh, uh, sometimes that we vary in serving the Lord by choosing things of this world and uh, we have a, a greater desire sometimes for the things of this world. And right. Sure that, uh, so this morning in chapter 12 of the book of Luke, chapter, verse 13, it says, And one of the, the company said unto him, Master, seek to speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who may be a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesses. Amen. So here we want to see this man as he is asking Jesus. And many times, many times in our lives, I'm sure that we pray sort of like in this manner that we ask the Lord, uh, uh, would you send me some money or would you send me this or would you send me that? And listen, he's able to do that and he's capable of doing that. And, but here we see this is a, 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 a sort of a different thing. Uh, the man that was, was uh, wanting him to divide it with, Jesus to divide it with him, was coveted. He had coveted. He, 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 was, he was wanting half of what his, uh, evidently his brother had. And the, oh, it probably was the older brother because that's the one that most of the time got the inheritance. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so... I don't know if it was customary for him to divide it or not, but anyway, evidently he's having a, a time of getting his part, if it was his part, but anyway, he asked him to do this. And uh, uh, he said to him, he said, uh, man who made me a judge or a divider over you. And so <clears throat> this morning, we as, as God's people, we need to understand that <clears throat> God is, is don't, he don't, uh, uh, every time that we have a desire for these things, uh, it's not good for us, and it might not have been good for this man, but anyway, it's not his place uh, there. The way well, he's talking, that, that this, these things that, that are, uh, he's asking him for <clears throat> would be any good to him, because he goes on to say here this morning that for a man's life consisteth not of the abundance. Amen. And this morning, we as God's people, uh, sometimes we look at our bank accounts and uh, and we look at the things that we want and the things that we don't need and the things that uh, it's not really good for us and we uh, we get to the point where well we start praying for these things well listen it's not it's not the best thing for us to do mm -hmm. uh, we as God's people need to pray that the, the Lord will supply our needs and that's what he said he promised he'd do is Amen. to supply our needs. And so these things that are out here in the world uh, that, that so many people lust after, crave after, and listen, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm ashamed you know, uh, to say this, but sometimes I see myself reaching out there and wanting and desiring the things of this world 
And uh, I don't ask the Lord about these things. I don't say, Lord, right. I'm coming to you first. I want your opinion on this. I want your help with it. But it, it, I, I make that special effort myself to reach out there and get these things. And listen, it's not, it's not good for us. Uh, we, we, we need to, we need to listen to what First uh, Timothy. I want to read something over in First Timothy, if you would, if you would turn with me to. I think it's the First Timothy. I find it real quick. <clears throat> uh, Y'all bear with me. I got a marker here somewhere with First Timothy in it. I wanted to read it. If I can, if, it, if I can't, well, I'm going to tell you just exactly what it says. For the lust, uh, the the lust for worldly things is not what we need to do. Amen. Y'all bear with me just a minute. Okay, First Timothy 6. Look, First Timothy 6 and verse, I'm going to read verse 1. Start with verse 1. And, Okay, let in verse six, uh, chapter six, verse one of First Timothy, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own master worthy of all honor. Now the yoke that he's talking about here is uh, it was for slaves, mm -hmm. and the thing of it is this morning that we, as God's servants, we count ourselves as slaves. Because we are a servant and we're Amen. we have a desire, Amen. we should have a desire to do what is pleasing to him. And so he says here this morning, count as many servants as are under the yoke, uh, as let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own master worthy of all honor. And now listen, this this is what he's saying. We we count God, we count the Lord Jesus Christ. As everything that happens to us is a, it's a, it's what needs to be, and it's an honor to serve Him under this yoke. And He says, here it says that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. Amen. And they that have believing masters, now listen to this. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved. Partakers of the benefits these things teach and exhort. Amen. Now, here also he's talking about the ones that have that don't believe in the Lord. In verse two, he's talking about the believers. And if we have a master out here in the worldly things that we're working for, and he's a believer in in the in the same God that we believe in, listen, we are to reverence him and to, uh, in, in, in that we are to be honest with him and and do a good day's work for him and, and, uh, and as uh, uh, as if uh, um, and and but here these th th this other one here he says in. Uh, 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 in verse 3, and if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, Amen. knowing nothing but dotting about questions. And I want to see, I show you this word dotting. I looked it up this, this morning. So I think I had it over here. It was a very, uh, I, I wanted to, to is, uh, I think, possess about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railing, evil, and submission. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with, with contention is great gain. Amen. I wanted to bring this out to you too this morning in this, in this scripture here. That as many services as are under the yoke, that means if you're if you're working for someone that is uh, your supervisor or something like this, and he is not a Christian, listen, you are supposed to still be fair with that man, not right, and and and, and serve him, <clears throat> and because listen, your service to him could uh, change his uh, change his way of living. He could it could lead him to the Lord, and so because a person uh, because a person is is mean to you. 
and uh, and all of these things uh, that uh, railing and evil submission, all of these things that they do to you because that you're working under them does not give you the right to be ugly towards them or not Amen. slack in their work. And so this is this is what the uh, Timothy is talking about here. He says uh, this is this is it for. Now notice in verse uh, 8, And having food and raiment, let us be therefore content. But they that, that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. Amen. Now, back as, as we were in our lesson, and he, this man was talking to them about him, dividing his part with them. Listen. What does verse 9 say uh, uh, to uh, us in 1 Timothy 6? But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which draw men unto the destruction. And so he says, for the love, for the love or for the desire for uh, uh, putting God on second place and, and you're going after the things of this world, listen, for the love of money is the root. Amen. The root. Before everything springs from the root. And he says it's from the, the root of all evil. And so if your lust and your you you your desire to have other things and you want to uh, put going to church off or put reading your Bible or or helping a neighbor or doing these things, but you're out there to going as hard as you can to get what the world has got for you, filling that bank with money and stuff. Right. Listen, it's wrong. And uh, hey, I can tell you this this morning. I I am, I have to watch myself very closely. I have to watch myself very closely because I like to make a dollar. And it's not, it's not the right way to be. But, and so listen, this morning, I'm reading this not for anybody else but Junior Page. Listen, this thing this morning uh, is it's it's a terrible thing to get in a condition where that you love the world and listen. Mm -hmm. You say, "Well, I don't love the world. I don't love the money." Well, listen. Let me tell you this: if the government changes and you got a bank full of money and they say that money ain't no good, are you? I mean, listen. It's going to hurt you. It's going to mm -hmm. tear you up. It's going to it's going to excite you. And listen, if, if you're not careful, you'll you'll do and th think things that, that you shouldn't think. And so I'm, I'm just using that as an example this morning because, listen, down the road a year from now, listen, you that's got a, a $50 in the bank, hey, that $50 may be gone. It may be, they may take it away. So this is, this is the thing about money, the love of it, if you love it, it's it's the love of that money is the root of all evil and so you need to be careful how that you uh do worldly things because it will hinder you it will hinder you in more ways than you can imagine for serving the lord mm -hmm. and it will hinder you it'll hinder you so that you'll get to the point where you don't like to come to church you don't want to Tied, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. Listen, it's that way mm -hmm. because that love, that love. If you love it, you're loving it more than you do God. So, so here it is. So now notice, I want to I want to turn to First Peter just a minute here and read you something else in First Peter two eighteen. First Peter two eighteen. It says, servants. Be subject to your master with all fear, mm -hmm. not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Now, this forward is the harsh, mm -hmm. and that's what I was trying to tell you about while ago, working for those that are harsh to you, those that are mean to you, and, and, and back in the slave times when they had the blacks here for slaves, listen, I know there was a lot of them that got beat, they got kicked, they got mistreated, but listen, there was a lot of them too that their masters thought of a lot of them and treated them decent. But listen, anyway, God's word says if 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 you have a master like that, if you have an employer like that that's over you, uh, just be patient and and pray for the man because listen, he says here, uh, he he says. His servants be sub subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle. 
but also to the full. For in verse 19, for this is thanks worth, thank worthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering, wrongful. For what glory is it if when he is buffeted for your fault, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well and suffer it for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. And Amen. so this morning, if you have a if, a if you have a situation in your life where that that the people are mistreating you where you were, or or you're trying to help somebody or something like that, the Bible says here it is acceptable with God if you take it patiently and pray for that person. Because listen, that. That is just like pouring hot water on him because, listen, God hears your prayer. God mm -hmm. sees your situation. God knows all about you and how that you're being buffeted. And this is, this is, a, this is, a, this is to me, the way that you can get some easement. Uh, you can cuss him. You can, you can uh, short him in work. You can do this and you can do that. And, listen, it won't do a thing for you. Mm -hmm. But if you'll accept it and, and pray for that man earnestly or that woman earnestly and say, Lord, you help them to understand the love of God. Mm -hmm. That will fill your bucket so full. Amen. And you, you, a lot of people just don't understand that. But that's the way, that's the way that we are just to uh, treat someone that is harsh to us, that is mean to us. Pray for them because... God has got the last say in the Amen. whole thing, and, and he will. So now notice, in verse 21, for even hereunto we ye, for e, even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now here's Amen. what he did for us. Listen, who did no sin, Neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he, he threatened not, but committed himself to them that judged, judgeth righteousness. And so this morning he said, into my hands I commend my soul. And he commended himself and I'm back to God. And he did not revile these people. He did not. He did not uh, do what he was capable of doing. My, my, my! He was capable of doing anything that that he wanted to do. Right. But he come with with a desire to uh, be a help to the world and to die for the world. And all he had in his heart was love for the world. And so this morning, again, back in our lesson now in Luke 12, he says here that, that uh, in verse uh, 16, notice now, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because I have no room for it to bestow all my fruit. Now listen, this is a person that is in love with the world. Mm -hmm. This is a man that is haughty. He's, he covets what he's got. He don't want to share it with no one. He wants to hang everything up and say, hey, listen what he says. And he said, this will I do. Mm -hmm. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, yeah. Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. People, that is so, so, so sad. Because the man did not know what he was saying. He didn't know that his time on earth was over. He didn't know all of these things about uh, what he was doing, and he was so he was so stingy. He was so uh, uh, afraid that somebody was going to get some of his stuff, and uh, he said, "Well, I'll just build me some bigger barn." Mm -hmm. And uh, how 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 cheap is that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when you have people in this world that needs stuff, and you have plenty, and God gave it to you, and He just over overfilled you. And listen, 
We don't need to be stingy, people. We just don't need right. to be stingy because, listen, if we've got two coins in our pocket to rub together, God gave them to us. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be willing. We ought to be willing. And, and I know people say, well, this is all I've got. But the thing of it is, you've got to remember the, 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 old, the lady with the mite. And she put in her last mite. Amen. And uh, so, listen. Jesus said she's given more than the rest of them. And they were pitching in all, all kinds of money. And so this morning, uh, we, we need to understand what we have. Amen. It's not ours. It's not ours. It's long to us. And if we do well with it, if we do it pleasing to God, mm -hmm. he, will, he will see to it that the barrel never runs dry, as he did with the woman. And, and, and so, listen, this morning... Uh, take take heed to your to your thoughts about the worldly possessions Amen. because they will they will uh, eventually uh, hurt you. And here I want to I want to I want to ask uh, uh, in verse twenty two. And he said unto his disciples in verse twenty two, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat, neither for the body what it shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Amen. And he says here, consider, just consider that old crow out there, that old raven, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. Amen. How much more are you better than the, the least fowls? And listen, this morning, you put yourself in a, just put yourself in, a, in an old bird out there. He's got winter coming on. He ain't got nothing to look forward to, but he knows that there'll be something out there for him because God put it out there for him. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with us this morning. We don't know what we've got coming down the line, and but there's one thing about it. I guarantee you, God's in front of it. God knows what's going to happen. Amen. God will take care of us and he'll supply our needs. And so with this, uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, we should just really truly Pray closer and live closer and, and try to serve the Lord and, and the things that we've got in this world. We don't put a big uh, uh, halo around them and say, oh, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. And because, listen, it's going to be like the uh, the question asked the, the, the man that had the barn. Uh, he didn't know it, but tonight thy soul it's a, be required of thee. Mm -hmm. Then what we have? And so you stand before God uh, and confess that you were stingy and that you didn't love your brother and sisters uh, and things like that. And that's, that's not a pleasant thing to think about because uh, God sent his son Jesus and he did not come by one time and say, hey, I'm better than you are. Uh, God's my father and you're, a, you're of the devil in, in that sense. But he didn't put himself above anybody else, but he was he was meek as a lamb, and uh, he went to the cross, and he died for us. And uh, that's something this morning that we need to keep in mind. Amen. And it'll, it'll, it'll tend to our hearts a little bit, and it'll cause us to appreciate more the things that God has given us and how great they are. Amen. Because, uh, we, you know, we ain't got no way to, to really, truly, this old body of ours is just as weak as it can be. And so if it, God didn't give us the strength, we couldn't, we couldn't get anything. So he's given it to us. And uh, enjoy it, but thank him for it. Amen. And be not stingy with it. Yeah. Because uh, uh, it's pleasing to God. It's pleasing. It's be acceptable to him if he did that thing. Thank you all so much for listening. Yeah. Now,